All right. Thank you so much, uh, Deepti, for the kind introduction. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are joining. Um, interesting day, Sunday, very cold here in the Netherlands. It's minus uh, six degrees outside um, and it is supposed to snow today. So uh, looking forward to a very interesting day today. Uh, <clears throat> But then, uh, you know, in the last one year, we've had the world see something, see a revolution of sorts. And on November 30th, uh, 2022, it was OpenAI who announced ChatGPT, and that has kind of revolutionized the world. So uh, this gives me a perfect opportunity to talk about it this year. You know, what better topic than talking about AI because it has taken the world by storm. And what happened uh, as a result of that announcement on the 30th of November was that we saw a plethora of tools come out. Uh, you know, Google joined the race uh, with Bard. Then you had other uh, generative AI apps such as Perplexity, Perplexity uh, uh, you know, joined the race. Uh, we had Adobe announce their uh, platform. We had IBM announce their platform and so on and so forth. And uh, there is a heavy competition in the market. And uh, it did not end there. You know, with that, we saw a lot of opportunities. We saw almost everyone jumping into the AI race and building things on top of the generative AI engines that came out. And what that did was... Uh, you know, it proliferated and it created a lot of competition. And uh, in the testing tools market also, there was a sort of an upheaval, if I may use the term, uh, which led to a lot of tool companies join the AI race and build their tools and platforms on top of uh, ChatGPT and the likes. But, uh, you know, uh, we as these things were happening, we also saw a lot of skepticism around uh, the progress that we can actually make with AI in its current state. And to be very honest, as a tester, uh, I would join that skepticism. In fact, I am a technology skeptic. I, I uh, straight away don't believe that things will work the way uh, they should because I want proof, okay, as I want evidence. As testers, we all look for evidence, right? So the tester in me is always questioning whether we can uh, deliver or whether we cannot deliver uh, to the promises that we make. And uh, that has been making me think. I have been uh, also involved in doing a lot of research work around this area. And today uh, with this topic, with this uh, keynote, I want to present to you some of the things that I've been researching on, share with you my views and uh, tickle your brains. Now, uh, over the course of the last two days, we have seen a lot of topics around generative AI and AI being discussed. And I, I am pretty sure that there are topics in the physical conference next week as well around the same theme. And, uh, you know, as you would have seen me do in the previous editions of the conference as a you know, panel discussion host or a speaker, I uh, you know, try to swim against the tide and try to sort of set the cat amongst the pigeons. So you can call me the Arnab Goswami of the world of testing, you know, creating a bit of stare and, and creating some doubt. I know that there is a generative AI workshop as well today. So when you get into that workshop, I want to tickle your brains a bit so that you have more questions. Uh, and uh, that workshop will become even more interesting with that thought. So on that note, I want to start a little more about me. I'm a principal consultant with Infosys. I am the chief enablement officer at the Test Chat community. Uh, we are a very strong uh, 25,000 plus global members uh, community dedicated to software testing and conversations around software testing. Plus, we have a very big uh, jobs corner supporting people in their job search. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. It is, uh, of course, there are a few Bridges Daves on LinkedIn. Uh, two of them actually have their profile pictures. One of them is me, so you, you can very easily find me. Um, 
Now let's look at some of the use cases uh, for generative AI. And, uh, you know, when we talk about generative AI, one of the first things people tried doing was to ask uh, ChatGPT is if it can generate test cases, and it did very well on that. Uh, I don't want to get into the test cases uh, discussion per se, but uh, people made a lot of use and generated test cases. Uh, it could generate test data. It could help you with prioritization uh, and analysis of defects. Uh, you know, it could do some future prediction as well uh, based on trends because it is, uh, you know, uh, a machine learning model, in fact. So uh, it could help you with prioritization. It could help you with visual testing. And of course, a lot of analytics could be built around it. Now, these are some of the use cases. This is not an exhaustive set. There is a lot of things that you could do with, uh, with chat GPT. So that is all brilliant. That is amazing. And of course, it is work in progress. And like I said that, there are a lot of people in the testing world working towards uh, AI and its progress. And one of them is Jason Arbonne. Uh, you know, his name cannot be missed if you are in the world of testing and are interested in AI and generative AI and what. So he is the CEO of Checky.ai. He's, uh, you know, done a lot of work. He came on the recent podcast and uh, had a conversation with Jeffrey Payne and, and you know, he makes a claim that there will be more and more demand in testing thanks to AI. So there are people who have been talking about the fact that, you know, AI will take away the jobs, but he has a contrary claim to make and he's been working towards it. He's, uh, you know, put out a lot of his research and his work is there for people to see. You could uh, look at Medium for his articles. You could look at LinkedIn for his articles and for his uh, work being done, which he has made public. So this is all excellent. But so when you have a lot of good things going around, there is always a yes, but. And this is also a similar situation. The question that I want to ask is, is everything hunky-dory as it looks? Is everything so nice? Now, yesterday, there was a wonderful presentation by Sunita and Chaitali, I guess, uh, from Capgemini talking about quality engineering. And, uh, you know, they put out a lot of use cases, a lot of case studies that they've been working on. And one of the questions that I had in my mind was, are the results 100% reliable? Can you completely rely on the results that you're getting as a result of your, your uh, experiments with generative AI? And the response was no. And that is what is uh, I want to talk about. Now, not staying away from the memes, uh, here's something that I tried with ChatGPT uh, when it came out early in, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, late last year. So I asked this question to ChatGPT that when I was six years old, my brother's age was one sixth of my age. I'm 45 years old now. So how old is my brother? Okay, so uh, I know it's a bit of a taboo to talk about age in India, but in the Netherlands, it is customary to talk about your age. When you are introducing yourself, you also announce your age. So, so you know, you get to know my real age, which is perfectly okay. Okay, but then the question here is, ChatGPT got it wrong. Okay, because uh, if you read the question again, uh, he was already one year old, my brother, when I was six years old, which means that the age difference is five years. So if he was 45, then my brother was supposed to be 40 years old, uh, whereas according to Jack GPT, it was 39. So there is flawed logic and there is reason for you to question, you know, the intelligence that Jack GPT is trying to bring in. But that's uh, not the end of it. You know, when we, when I asked uh, chat GPT for the questions and I asked it to give test strategies for a retail uh, shopping website and for a travel booking website it gave me almost the same strategy you know there has to be difference of course there is difference in terminology and a little bit of interfaces which is pretty smart but can you really really test uh, both contexts in the same way 
some of you may say yes, some of you will uh, in, indeed scratch your heads and that is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, uh, that's not all. If you thought that it was just chat GPT which was doing this, uh, our good friend from Google, that is Bard, was also doing something similar. It is also a large language model. It is also, you know, having a similar training data set, although Google Bard is much more equipped because it has got access to the internet compared to ChatGPT, which does not. So uh, you would expect it to do better, but it does not do better. So uh, talking about the allure and pitfalls of AI in testing. While AI brings a lot of promise of efficiency, accuracy, and automation into the testing process, there are biases, ethical implications, and limitations in certain testing scenarios. This has uh, been my critical observation so far. While AI is meant and intended towards bringing more efficiency, accuracy, and to help you with automation, there are a lot of challenges. There is a bias. There are ethical implications and limitations in uh, testing scenarios. Now, uh, sorry. Um, so here are some more popular opinions. I uh, will check. Let me. So yeah, I'll just stop the share and share my screen again so that I can play the uh, video. Yes. Just, um, sure. Um, when you share, there is a checkbox button, right? Yes, 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 yes. And I, uh, Adi, I remembered it all the while uh, before the start of the conference, and then I forgot. So, uh, well, that's <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> That's me. Okay, so um, yeah, here it is. Okay, uh, so here is a popular opinion. This uh, lady you, you can see on the screen is Meredith Whittaker. She was the uh, CEO of Signal Corporation when this video was recorded by Washington Post. She is now the uh, co-founder and CEO of AI Now Institute and is a very popular voice in the world of AI and has been known in the world for the research that she's been doing. So here But generative AI is not actually that useful. What happened in January was that technology or sort of a, a framework for building models that had been developed in 2017 was sort of put online with an interface by Microsoft slash OpenAI who have to be understood as the same entity. Right. And the chat GPT interface kind of gave people a simulated experience of like, oh, my God, I'm talking to kind of a human. It's spitting out nonsense, but it's spitting it out. And this feels kind of sentient. Right. And on the backs of this advertisement for their GPT API, which they sell through their Azure cloud services, they sort of generated an entire new hyped narrative around generative AI as this sort of future facing technology that's going to change every industry. But what does it do, right? It, you know, it presents visual images that are often, you know, stolen from artists or like far too close for comfort. And it presents plausible text, right? It infers what's the sort of plausible response to a prompt based on, you know, mountains of data from the internet, the Reddits, the 4chans, you know, the storm front is in there as Natasha's work has shown. Own, you know, and, and kind of presents text that looks plausible but has no relationship to facts, has no relationship to reality, has no citations, right? So what is this useful for? It's not useful in most serious contexts. Yeah, you could, re you know, replace a junior copywriter, but you better have a senior copywriter who's checking that text because it's going to be janky. So, uh, so you saw what uh, she said and... Uh... You know, similar things have been said by some of the popular voices in the testing industry as well, where there is, uh, I would use the word skepticism uh, in the minds of people because, you know, uh, the output that you get out of models such as ChatGPT or BART is only as good as the training data set. Now, uh, when you have a training data set, you uh, have got to be sure that 
that training data set is devoid of any biases or any you know ethical compliance issues and you've got to make sure that that you know it is uh, giving you the necessary result uh, that that you are actually looking for so here is uh, something that james and michael said and not just that uh, you know uh, there are popular voices from india as well shrini kulkarni who's speaking at uh, ata gtr in the physical conference and our good friend uh, rahul verma uh, have also spoken about it in detail in uh, posts so you know guys if you are looking to learn more about the opinions in the industry uh, you know you might want to check uh, their work out on this because uh, there's been a lot of work that has been put there are a lot of good questions that are being asked and uh, you know you are getting some wonderful responses from people who are working in the field of uh, ai so what does it mean for us in in terms of testing okay uh, still if you look at the entire testing landscape we want to have discussions about reliance and distrust okay uh, when you ask chat gpt uh, or google bard to help you write a framework for uh, say for your uh, you know automated testing uh, uh, for your application it may spit out some code okay uh, can you really really rely on that code and just pick it up and plug it into your uh, system to make it work probably no because uh, it will lack the context and it will give you something generic based on the information that it has so that is something that you have to watch out for so that is why it is important for you to have these conversations whether you can rely or you know at to what extent can you trust or not trust the system of course then you will have to come up with tools that that circumvent this problem and go around it and give you the necessary solution also you know you constantly you have to be talking about how to bring ethical compliance okay and i keep talking about ethical compliance is because a lot of output that is being given by chat gpt uh, is ethically non compliant at the moment and it has created issues of course you know uh, these models they rely on the data that you feed into them which is more and more dangerous now uh, or a platform such as chat gpt uh, you know which says that they have training data till september 2021 but they are also picking up stuff and picking up information and there was news from samsung that you know uh, while trying to craft a great prompt for chat gpt to give certain output an employee from samsung gave the engine some of the important data that samsung needed for a particular project and that data was of course consumed by the model because it is constantly trying to learn from what what you are trying to feed into it and that brought up a real big issue and that employee of course lost his job and uh, you know samsung suffered a huge loss so you know such issues will keep coming so you have to be smart enough and uh, look around what uh, you can do so uh, something that we saw in the covid uh, testing world you know the ai software that was uh, you know used it went through a lot of trials there was a software that was associated and then you know it uh, sort of uh, gave you the kind of results that you needed but something but that thing that not happened with the vaccines but at the same time you know comparing it to the testing world there are uh, you know advantages and disadvantages of uh, intelligent automation as we might want to call it that is automation backed by artificial intelligence there is a lot of promise okay uh, that 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 these systems make in terms of of giving you more efficiency of adding a lot of uh, impetus to your testing but then it struggles in case of complex situations and we've seen a few examples 
Okay. Uh, now it's important that you uh, balance these and the reliance on AI with the limitations in detecting certain types of issues. And that is something that you have to be wary about. Now, <clears throat> now uh, I'm talking about trust and it has got to be the rightful balance between lawful, law, uh, robust and ethical uses of AI. And only then at the intersection, you will get something that you can actually trust. Okay, you've got to build a system which understands the system, the, the context, okay, and, uh, you know, gives you an unbiased view and, of course, takes care of the ethical considerations. Now, the big question, okay, consciousness. Now, uh, imagine uh, AI system having feelings. Uh, that is something that everybody is expecting, AI to understand and respond have a perspective, have a point of view. And that is a big area in which even I am trying to do my research on and currently focused on is, uh, and that is because if you have a conscious AI system, then it will solve a lot of problems for you. Right now, we talk about automation and we say, okay, we need human intervention from time to time to take judicious decisions. Uh, you know, we need... Uh, human intervention for analysis, we need human intervention to decide and ask questions. Now, if the AI system that is backing up your automation is conscious enough, then it will be able to help you with the analysis. It will be able to ask those relevant questions. Of course, it also means that, you know, there will be a bit of emotion attached to it because that's how humans react. And that's a part of the decision-making process, for example, you know, uh, if you are running a set of uh, automated test, tests and there are about 100 tests that you are talking about, then uh, you at one point you see that those tests are not giving you the right results. Then you, of course, take a decision of scrapping those tests and adding a new set or making some changes. So those kind of decisions, uh, you know, uh, for, for you to be able to make or for an AI system to be able to make, you would need consciousness. And when we talk about consciousness in AI systems, there are two types of consciousness, which is access, access consciousness and phenomenal consciousness. Access consciousness is basically knowing what we know. So for the AI system to understand what information has been fed to it and phenomenal consciousness is having a point of view. So based on what it knows, it will have a point of view and it will try to express itself. It is always, when you talk about artificial consciousness, it will always be a combination of these two. And that will help the AI system to understand, uh, you know, what training data has been fed and what kind of decisions you can take based on these. This is a very interesting area. This is something that requires a lot of testing. This is one area which requires a lot of questioning, a lot of thinking. There's been a lot of research being done. Uh, I am trying to do my bit in this area. Uh, as, as research work. So, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, soon I'll be able to publish some of what I have been able to find out. Now, now uh, when we talk about the future of testing, uh, you know, we've had a lot of leaders such as Albert Einstein, uh, you know, Steve Jobs, even Charles Darwin make a lot of statements about uh, balanced testing and what you need to consider is, uh, you know, a balanced approach to get a trustworthy system, which provides you context-based results, which are much ethical in nature. So uh, some of the key points uh, uh, important to remember are embracing the complexities. Uh, you know, there will be complexities in the system. There will be, uh, you know, situations where you have to balance between reliance and distrust. And there is a need for ethical alignment. Now, uh, you have to embrace the complexity. You have to embrace you know, context awareness. You need to understand that the AI system is dumb enough not to understand your context. So you might have to feed it again and again. Now, just to give you an example, when I told the, when I told ChatGPT that it had made a mistake in the calculation, 
and it had not considered the fact that my brother was already one year old uh, when uh, I was six years old. So that's where it, uh, you know, corrected itself, it apologized and gave uh, a result. Now, there are two principles that I am suggesting for future testing. One is technology, humans, and biases. There has to be a combination of the two. And the second principle that I would like to suggest is an ethical alignment. Uh, that said, there are a few points for discussion for future. And this is something that we have to keep in mind and keep them ongoing. On that note, I want to thank you all for listening to me. I hope this has helped uh, tickle your brains a bit and uh, giving you some ideas around uh, testing and what you could do with AI. Thank you. Yes, Rajesh. I think uh, the Tickle Minds also have asked a few questions on chat if we can take that. Um, so Kavita is saying now that AI and ML in India has been failed in implementation part, will GPT uh, overcome this? Uh, why, okay, so why, why is there an opinion that it has failed? I don't think it has failed. Okay. Uh, yeah, there have been some experiments which have not worked out, but in general, there is a lot of work being done. GPT will definitely help. Uh, but uh, trust me, there is a lot of work being done out of India, which is brilliant. In fact, in fact, if you go to OpenAI, there's a lot of contribution coming in from India as well in terms of building chat GPT and the likes of it. Okay. The next is uh, when we talk about AI, there is some concerns with the inherent biasness that comes along with the mm -hmm. model. Uh, would you be able to share something on that? Yeah. So, so uh, bias is one of the key concerns and you could see me uh, repeating that word. Okay. So, so your training data set, you know, it, it, AI, any AI system is only as good as the training data set. The training data set will contain biased information. Okay. That's a given. As humans, we write a lot of stuff, we you know generate a lot of content, and there is a lot of inherent bias because we are all biased. Okay, so uh, that will always be there. It is fed into the system. So the system is also tending to be biased. And that is why it is important to curate your training data set first. Okay, let the experts look through your information and you know give in multiple views so that the bias reduces. Okay, uh, it has to have an opinion which is coming from multiple sides uh, before it is being fed into the system. When your training data is curated and has been overseen by a lot of experts, then it will help you reduce the amount of bias that you have. Whether it is, uh, you know, you need that training data set for generating test data or for your test scenarios or for your, uh, you know, test cases, you will get a lot of help if you run it past a lot of eyes rather than running it past uh, somebody who's just worked on only one segment because that will tend to give it bias. So it's important that you do the necessary curation. Uh, any inputs on the mindset of test engineers while they test generative AI based applications? Uh, this, is, this, this is a very interesting one. And this is exactly what James, Michael and a lot of others have been talking about. Okay, now always keep in mind that when you're testing generative AI based applications or taking the help of generative AI, uh, these systems lack context, number one. Second thing, there is a lot of ethical compliance issues that they already have. Third thing is the bias that you just spoke about deeply. So it is important that people recognize this and factor this in, in their day-to-day uh, -day work. You know, it is important for them to establish this in their mind and go with that approach. So that mindset has to be there that, okay, there may be mistakes. What I know so far may not be completely accurate. So I have to think of ways to make it more uh, accurate and, you know, run it past a lot of eyes to get more opinions, to get more feedback so that my results are more reliable. So instead of trusting the AI system as is, you know, you bring in certain variations by yourself. So that human factor is very important. Uh, on the same lines, uh, if we are including AI on uh, producing remarkable, uh, sorry, if we are including AI in test data generation and test case preparation, do you think there will be a remarkable result? Oh, uh, you know, I, I have used it. So I fortunately have 
access to GPT-4 or the ChatGPT's Pro version. And it does a good job in terms of generating test, test data and in terms of generating test ideas. I, I don't necessarily use the term test cases, but I use test ideas as an idea, uh, as, a, as a thought process for testing. It, it does a good job, but for that, you have to be, uh, you know, uh, you have to try a lot. There's a lot of trial and error that goes into it. You've get, you have to get the prompt right so that the engine understands your context. And that is the most important thing here. Okay, because until it understands the context in its entirety, it will not give you the result that you need. So, so uh, I have personally worked on it. I can help people if they uh, need to design their prompts accurately. Uh, you know, after this session, maybe whenever uh, there's an opportunity, you can reach out to me and I can help you do that so that you get the test data generated because it does a fairly good job and it can handle a good size of test data or, you know, test cases as, as it may apply to your case uh, in, in terms of generating that. Okay, one last thing that we can accommodate because of time. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. growing demand of regulation in AI. Recently, there was yes. a conference conveyed in UK on the same. There's a growing yes. divergence and regulation of AI uh, to keep it all free. Any thoughts yes. on that? Keep it all free. Now, that is interesting. Now, regulation and free are, are, are two different discussions altogether. Now, the, uh, the video that I shared from... Uh, Dr. Meredith Whitaker, where she spoke about her views, and then there was a similar conclave. So similar discussions keep happening, and these uh, discussions have prompted, you know, the world to think about regulations around AI as to what it should be allowed to do, what it should not be allowed to do, and uh, you know, when ChatGPT came out first, students started using ChatGPT for uh, writing their school essays. So the schools had to put down a regulation saying, no, this is not allowed. And then you saw a rise of AI detection engines that will you know, tell you whether it is an AI generated text or not. And uh, so, you know, such regulations had to be put in place and such regulations are required because of the, uh, you know, ethical compliances that we are talking about because of the biases that we are talking about. On the other hand, to make it free, well, it will be um, a dangerous proposition to make, in my personal opinion, because if it's free and if it is accessible by almost everybody, then you do not know who's making use of it for what purpose. And as AI uh, is getting better and is gaining that consciousness that I spoke about, that it is learning and it, it is, it's, it's like, you know, somebody has, starting to get feelings. Okay, if, 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 uh, I, if we can see a child grow, when it grows, it, it captures more emotions, it understands, it can express hurt, it can express pain, it can express anger. So, you know, imagine the AI system having that level of consciousness. Uh, so it will create challenges if it were to be free. So this is my personal perspective. I mean, uh, we can have a debate. This is a very good topic and will help me with my research as well. But then, uh, you know, personally, at this point, at this stage, as of today, uh, you know, the 3rd of December, 2023, I think there is a lot of need for regulation. And I personally don't think it should not, it should not be free. It will be dangerous at the current state. Okay. Uh, I think Ganesh had a question which he wants me to articulate in a particular way. Uh, mm -hmm. Will including AI into testing, do you think which will produce remarkable results apart from test data generation and test cases preparation? Well, uh, you know, AI is here to stay, okay? And uh, AI will definitely help testers. It is not just test uh, data generation or test case preparation, you know, predictive defect analysis. Now, we have built an AI-based engine for predictive defects analysis already in one of our previous projects. That was quite helpful. Uh, uh, it was some time back, it was much before uh, OpenAI announced its platform. So, you know, there has been a lot of work that is being done. This is one more example, you know, uh, test report generation is one more area where AI, AI can help. I know people will say, oh, there are uh, tools which are already available, but, but, you know, people always seek customizations and stuff. So AI will be able to do it uh, very nicely for you. So there is a lot of scope 
for AI to help you. It will only make you efficient and effective as a tester if you embrace it properly, if you keep in mind the ethical compliances, if you keep in mind the issues around consciousness, if you keep in mind the biases in your head. Okay. Thank you so much, Pritesh. While we do have some connecting questions, if you could please stay with us and answer them on chat, we'll really appreciate it. Uh, but thank you so much for uh, taking us through this navigation of trust and distrust with AI. Thank you so much, Deepthi. Thank you so much, uh, Agile Testing Alliance. 